Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Ferrari FXXK in multiplayer in Asphalt 9. This is one car that people wanted in Asphalt 8 for quite a while, and now we finally have it in Asphalt 9. So I have mine three-starred at a rank of 3298, upgrades, max that I can, and import parts as well. So let's get to some races. These were recorded in the previous season, the Huayra season, I believe it was, so that is why there are a bunch of Huayras and stuff running around. Because the current season is the BMW Z4 only season. I made a video just a couple days ago about me reaching number one in the multiplayer leaderboard in the Z4 season, so if you haven't seen that yet, I would definitely recommend checking it out. So the FXXK is probably one of the very well-rounded cars in Asphalt 9. It has pretty good everything. It has decent acceleration, good nitro efficiency. I mean, its speed is rather low for Class S, but still, it's good in the grand scheme of things in the game. Overall, it's just a nice and stable car to drive and one of the best cars in the Huayra season. It can be thought of as a slight downgrade to the Egoista, which is slightly slightly better than it in most aspects, but has about the same driving feel. And speaking of the Egoista, in the current encores that are going on, I managed to three-star the Egoista, so hopefully I'll make a video about that sometime, and I got the Corvette Grand Sport, which is not especially great at one star in terms of speed. Now, its acceleration and handling and nitro efficiency are all really good. It is famous for having one of the best nitro efficiencies in the game, but its speed is like 205 at one star, which is really bad for B-Class. So we managed to stay ahead of everyone for the second lap, and we come in first position, beating three LaFerraris, two P1s, one FXXK, and one Huayra BC, who was at nearly 4,000 rank but came in sixth. That car is just not as good as its rank suggests. Although it is getting a buff in the next update. Now here's something really interesting. The next multiplayer season after the Z4 season, which is going to start just a few hours, I think, after I upload this video, there is going to be a season that is apparently based on one of my videos. That is what Arrhythmia on the Asphalt 9 Discord said. Now sometimes he can be a bit of a troll, so we will have to see what this entails. The first idea that came into my mind was a Shelby multiplayer season. Then I was thinking, well, we just had a one-car multiplayer season, so I don't know if that would make a lot of sense. So perhaps it is a Shelby and Hemi multiplayer season, because I made a video recently about the Shelby and the Hemi comparing them, and so that just makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. So I guess we will see in just a few hours whether or not my prediction is correct. So we come in first in this race, beating a rank 3500 BC, as well as a three-star P1, who we knocked down at the beginning accidentally. Almost all of the time when I knock down somebody in multiplayer, it was accidental, so if you meet me in a race and I knock you down, just be aware that that was not on purpose. Unless, of course, you targeted me or something earlier, which has happened sometimes, not you guys watching, but like it's just happened before where people have targeted me in races for whatever reason and those are the people I will be purposely going after. But just know that if you play clean with me, I will play clean with you. This race is between three LaFerraris, myself, and two Huayras. And see that knockdown right there was unintentional. He just got under me when I was falling from my jump. I wasn't purposely trying to land on him or anything. This ramp here is one that too often, if you flat spin too early, just shoots you straight up into the air. So I found one way to avoid that just flat spin a little earlier than you might normally do on a ramp you might lose a bit more speed than if you go up and normally however you lose a lot less speed than if you just fly straight up into the air which usually puts you down to like a hundred miles per hour or something so the car ahead of us right now is a 3300 rank Huayra BC. Now, we are behind him by a couple seconds or so, but just remember, we do have two laps. So let's see if we can catch up to him. Now, remember what I said in my previous video about Arrhythmia saying the car hunts and unleashed events were over? Well, apparently that was a troll. We should be getting some more of them. So do not fear, guys. Those of you who made comments on my video who are very sad about that, you don't have to fear anymore. So whenever I'm behind somebody and trying to catch up, it becomes even more of a priority to do the speed tricks and stuff than it would be if I was ahead, for example, because if I'm ahead, there's no need to do anything risky, so I just stay ahead, assuming the people behind me aren't going to catch up. But here, when you're behind, well, you have a reason to do speed tricks. Maybe the other person doesn't, and so you might be able to catch up. As here, you can see I've caught up a bit closer to him. Here, I take the right route, which is faster than the left route, as you will see, because this is where I passed him. The reason you will occasionally see me go left instead of right is because left is a little bit less risky, but in this case,
case, I needed to get past him doing anything I could, and going right isn't all that risky. Multiplayer in Asphalt 9, and also in Asphalt 8 for that matter, is a lot about figuring out what risks you want to take and what risks you don't want to take, and quite quickly and on a moment's notice because you can't pause a multiplayer race to make decisions. But thankfully, my decisions in this race turned out quite well, and we come in first place, ahead of that BC who was at 3300 rank, I believe it was, as well as four other people. This is a full 8-player race with 3 BCs, 2 P1s, a LaFerrari, and a VLF. I have the VLF at 3 stars. I didn't use it much this season, but I do hope to make a multiplayer video about it sometime. That was him, the VLF, going through us right there. The ghosting... I don't know exactly why it happens, but there's some people that just ghost when they're near others, and I'm not sure if that's internet connection or some sort of hack. I'm pretty sure that most of the oddities that you see in Asphalt 9 with connection-looking things are usually really connections and not hacks, like the ghosting and all that, because that was a thing in Asphalt 8. Now, if there is somebody who's just blatantly running into things and not wrecking, I have not seen that hack yet, or say they start up really, really fast, Stuff like that are definitely hacks, but not just blinking when nothing else happens. So that was a little bit weird what happened there. Thankfully, I get out without wrecking, and we come up to this first place guy here who wrecked. And now we are in first place. Amazing how it all works out, but just sometimes. Usually stuff like that would kill me like 99% of the time. So we are coming up to the 360 degree roundabout on this track. Some cars can take it better than others, but pretty much all cars can get around it not too bad. This car, I would say, has just about average drifting. It's not super tight, but not super wide either, allowing it to take most turns fairly easily. And most S-Class cars have this. Most S-Class cars have very sharp turning radiuses. The Centenario, not so much, but most of the other ones do. So here we beat these seven other players, and specifically a rank 37 VLF. In this season, a lot of players used the VLF because it was probably the easiest of the cars to 5-star, because this was the one that comes in an event every so often. It's one of those 4-day events, well, one every 4 days actually, where you can play and get a bunch of blueprints for the car. So assuming you play the event enough, you're going to get a 5-star VLF fairly soon. So here physics goes wonky, and I wreck. However, do not fear, we will come back. We are in far last position right now, but somebody else has already wrecked, and that gave me hope, because I am now not in last anymore. And the fourth and third place people are not too far ahead. So back to what I was saying about the VLF, while it's fairly easy to five-star it, I only actually have it three-starred because... Unfortunately, I forgot to play VLF events a lot of the time, but I'm going to try to be playing them from now on to get that car start up a lot. Because in some recent testing, it has actually done better than the P1 on quite a few tracks, which was rather unexpected. That might be due to its better nitro efficiency. While I know the P1 has better acceleration, and they both have around the same speed, that nitro efficiency can definitely do some good on a lot of tracks. So we've passed the 4th place guy and are now into 4th position, and now the 3rd and 2nd place people are not far ahead, and now the 3rd place person is behind. This is just usually what I do if I get knocked down near the beginning of a race, just try to play it out, um, try to get past people, hope they make mistakes, even if they don't make mistakes, sometimes I can pass a lot of them. Now of course sometimes everybody just plays really well, and I end up coming in a really bad position. Their physics goes wonky again. I'm not sure if it's just something with this car, or that ramp in general. It's happened to me a lot on that ramp in general, but it seems like more often in this car. Let me know, guys, does that ramp do weird things for you? So now we come to a bit of an intense part of the race. So this P1 here was in second place. I'm in third. I want to at least get second so that I can go up at least a good amount of points. So here I come right up next to him. We both flat spin. Thankfully, do not knock into each other, and I land ahead of him. However, he's still right behind me, and the P1 has better acceleration, maybe just a little bit than the FXXK, so that makes it a little bit interesting getting around these turns without him passing me but I do manage to get through them without him passing me and thus we stay in second position I found that San Francisco is actually one of my least favorite tracks for multiplayer instead of one of my favorites like it used to be there's just so many places where things can go wrong and it's also one of the hardest ones to get really good times on at least for me so in that race we lost to a 3700 rank FXXK but we did beat another nearly 3700 ranked one as well as a 3300 rank Huayra B C. In this race, we are facing a 4-star 3500 rank FXXK as well as 3 P1s, two of which are at 2 stars and one of which is at 3 stars. 
This race turned out to be an intense battle between me and that other FXXK. For some reason, my car does an extra 360 there. That has been happening a couple times recently. You would have seen a couple times in my BMW Z4 video. And now that there. There I accidentally knocked down that Pro TM guy. Again, I'm not going to purposely knock down people unless they are aggressive to me first. Here I use Shockwave and pull away from this P1 who was right on my tail and we land just behind this FXXK here. Now remember, he is four star, I'm three star, so I knew that I was not faster than him. So I take a slightly different route and we go right over each other in the air, more weird things happen, and thankfully somehow we land without knocking each other down. That was just weird up there. Then we come up to here and I 360 and somehow gain more speed than him and knock him down. There's nothing I could do. Again, he was just in the way, right where I needed to go. So we round the final bends of the first lap and then cross the lap two sign. And interestingly, in the second lap, he doesn't manage to catch up and he comes in last. I feel kind of sorry for him. Okay, so in this final race in the video, we are facing a rank 3700 Huera BC as well as a couple of P1s and a Pininfarina. What he's doing at this high of rating, I'm not exactly sure, but if he used that car to get up to near this rating, that's very impressive for that car. Although I think this was probably one of those races where I just found a bunch of people with lower rating than me. So here I use Shockwave. I found that those two curves there are a very good place to use Shockwave around because that is one way you can avoid getting slowed down on the sidewalks on both of the curves. So now it's time for, you guessed it, me to give my general review of this car. As you can see throughout this video, it is a very good car, not especially high in class S, but very good when compared with pretty much all other classes. All its stats are quite good, it's a very fun car to drive, and it is quite stable in most cases. Now there's some ramps that can do some weird stuff to it, as you saw in that San Francisco race earlier, but overall, it doesn't tend to do a lot of glitchy stuff like something like the Lycan might do. I've had a few problems with this ramp going too far to the right, but if you don't go super high up it, you probably won't have a problem with that. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt 8 and 9 content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!